wines. There's spirits and wines. There's wines and spirits, isn't it? Get a bit of the end of that. So tonight I'm making black and tan for the first time. Black and tan, according to Wikipedia, there will be other versions of it. So you can, with black and tan, you can use a lager or a pale ale or even a bit if you really wanted to. Good evening. And then you use a stout or a porter for the other element. So this is going to be interesting. I'm using the Heineken rip off this time for the uh, for the lager, uh, for the bottom element of it. So yeah, will I be able to do it as good as the on the video? I doubt it. Yeah, it does make you wonder, doesn't it? Cinnamon and vanilla stout. Ooh. So in the bottle, good evening. In the bottle is my Imperial Russian Stout. So a bit more stronger than what Guinness would be. So uh, yeah, this is going to be a, a bit of a ball grabber. So up to about halfway. There we go. Let it settle. Good evening. The bottle was, the stout is what I made, it's homebrew. Yeah, you can. On Wikipedia it says you can use homebrew. Oh, sorry, lager. You, you can use pale ale. I think it, it's all down. I mean, that's what Wikipedia says. Uh, well, when the internet. Yeah, I thought the same. So there's obviously there's obviously variations of the theme. I suppose it depends where you live and, and that. Right. So that's the lager element. So, and this is, a, this is about nine and a half percent, so it ain't weak, it ain't Guinness. So, we'll see if we can get the acquired effect. Shit. Oh, fuck me. Well, I don't think the lager's working. Does it? Oh, for fuck's sake. <clears throat> Spilt some of me Imperial. Yeah, I don't know. It's on the internet. You pour it over a spoon. I think it's supposed to stop it going down so quick. It hasn't worked. Yeah, I know. It's already gone straight down to the bottom. So it may be with, with pale ales. Mm. Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> it, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it didn't. I think the pale ale would have been thicker. So it would have took a bit of time to hold it before it seeped through. I think the lager was probably too light. But uh, what you read on the internet, isn't it? You know, if you look at some of the pictures on the internet, and it looks brilliant because you get like a, a light, and then you get the darkness of the stout, and it looks amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, cheers. No. Right, funnily enough, strangely enough, I can get, because I can't show you because I can't tip the glass up, the, the, the head of the lager is at the top with the, with the stout, Jeez. and uh, I, you can smell both the lager and the stout at the same time. My prune wine does get mixed in my stomach. Oh, that's crazy. Oh, um, I can certainly taste both elements straight away. The, the stout, strangely enough, the Russian stout is not masking the lager, which the cider really did. Prune and petrol. Yeah, it's the strength. Wow. I mean, my, my imperial stout is strong and it's uh, room temperature as well, the imperial. 
Whereas this is it obviously shed temperature. So whether temperatures make a difference. So obviously the, the, it didn't work out as what I wanted it to, but in the, at the end of the day, yeah, tomorrow's going to be fun. Good thing I work on my own, isn't it? Well, going into bed tonight, you know, if I fall asleep too early and before the wife and start ripping the room apart. I have to make sure the dog's sleeping on the floor so he gets the blame. Um, yeah, I still... Up as five in the morning. I'm not putting beer on the garden. Slug pallets. <laughs> Steaming. Yeah, pity the wife, definitely. Oh. I've got to go back up and clean the kitchen in a minute. Oh yeah, it actually shows up on, on, on there, doesn't it? Yeah, I suppose that's the problem with all, with all glasses. It's not easy. I mean, I've got a Titanic glass here, and obviously you can see that. You'll see that with any type of bearing, especially that side with the sticker on. Although somebody's put it in the dishwasher and got a lovely crack. And this is a thick glass. You can just see that crack. So, bloody dishwashers. I tell you what, don't put your branded glasses in dishwashers. Lethal. Um, Something's some cracked it. Yeah, it is a nice glass. Cost me about six quid as well. I actually drove over to Burslem uh, to the brewery shop. We was going from Alton Towers to Drayton Manor. Uh, we were doing a three-day uh, stopover at theme parks. And the glass itself, it's a thick glass. It's, you know, it's not, you know, you get some of these glasses and they're really thin, wispy glasses. No wonder they break easily. But this is a good, thick glass. Yeah, I can rub my finger against it. Pre-mixed black and tan. Wow. Drayton Manor is a good park. It's a, it's a family park. You know, they've got some good rides there, but they desperately need a roller coaster. When they, when one of their roller coasters died, the um, oh, X one, um, yeah, it kind of ruined the park for them. Some good rides, though. Some good little roller coasters there. And that they've got Shockwave. That's a good roller coaster. The standard roller coaster. Or, or you know, the ball acre, as most people know it, because for blokes, it just kills your bollocks. I mean, if you have that thing, when you're standing up, you push this thing. So, it's, and that bit, if you, if you get it too tight, then bloody hell. <laughs> yeah, no worse than glass all over your clothes in the suitcase. I bought, last time I went to Spain, I bought a load of spirits back, wrapped them all in, everything. You know, they're, they're so compact, com so tightly wrapped with clothes and towels just to stop them getting smashed on the way back in the suitcase. Because you see at the airport, you see how the people are with your luggage. It's like, fucking chuck it on, you know. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, the big tall St. Peter's glass, that's nice. I do, I do like a decent glass. I definitely want to build the extension to the beer wall once I get rid of my wife's stuff out of it and uh, put all the glasses on show. Although the only downer is, you know, you've still got to wash them at the end of the day when you, uh, when you use them. I mean, I had to wash 30 the other day, it just does you nothing. Still getting a hint of the lager, but the um, the stout certainly gives it the power, you know, the powerful element. It'd be interesting to do it with pale ale one day. I will do a pale ale and stout. I've got plenty of stout, so it's not like I can't do it, or even a bitter.
I bought the vocation pine glass. Metal tankards. I've got um Russian standard metal um cup thing. Is the tankers, is that the thing where you unscrew the top and drink out of that? If that's that, then my mates used to set them into town. They'd go into pubs in town and, uh, you know, just to save a bit of money, they'd have the whiskey in one of these little things that you screw on and pour it in. I know, it kills you, doesn't it? You're near enough crying, aren't you? Like, bastard me fucking beer. <sighs> ah, might be, yeah. Uh, getting me so do you mean just like a normal metal cup sort of thing oh dear definitely getting my imperial stout now oh right ah no it hadn't actually done that yeah i'm thinking of the wrong thing Some of the some of them harpers are okay, and there's one or two though that aren't. It's a bit, it's a miss in some ways. A drinking horn. Oh God, I've done all sorts of things. Dropped all sorts of things on me in, in bed. Yeah. Much to the wife's uh, annoyance, you know. Yeah. I'm legendary for doing the wrong thing. Good evening again. I've, I brought back from Salou uh, when, when I was at the theme park one of them yard of ales with the Estrella in. Obviously, well, it didn't have Estrella in when we brought it back, but. I've not seen the five grain lager from Shepherd Neen. That's a new one on me. Mm. Oh yeah, I bet she did. <coughs> oh. So, yeah. I think the stout batters the uh, lager in this one. Very much like how the cider battered the lager. Um, I will try a different version of black and tan, so I might uh, do another video one day. I'm also thinking of doing the one with the um, sparkling wine and the stout. Well, you can use Guinness, I suppose, but any stout should be decent. Uh, is it black velvet? Did I read earlier? So... Oh, bless you. 12 vocation cans. Vocation. Bloody fantastic brewery. Can't, you know, some of their, some of their Imperials are just outstanding. Um, the cherry and chocolate was really good. The Bonoffi was just sublime, you know. Uh, there's a fig one apparently as well now. So it'd be interesting to see what you've got. Hopefully it's a mixed box, you know. Mixed, mixed cases are always the best. As, you know, because you get to try... You ain't got imagine getting about 12 beers and the first one's horrible, and then you've got 11 more to drink. Not tonight, <laughs> couldn't do it. Grouse whiskey McEwen's. Oh, is it on? Is it on um, vocation now? Woman Ginger. Oh, no, I would be over that. I actually love rum and ginger, certainly ginger. Strange, isn't it? Some of these notifications make you chuckle. Lovely. And some great American beers. Oh, it's an old one. That's a shame, isn't it? Chocolate and caramel start at 6.6%. I may have that one. Right. 
I'd have to try and Google that. It's like, it's like the making all your box ticking beers. I must actually Google one day to see if there is a thing as an imperial ginger beer. Just to, uh, just to you know, see if there's one out there. And it saves me actually making my own. Good evening. So this is this is a there's a was a black and tan uh making black and tan but the lager because you can use lager or pale ale according to the internet but the lager was the stout was just too heavy for the lager and it just never really worked you never got that proper element triple ipa ten percent lovely right homebrew ones yeah I think somebody would make an own brew one. Fig stout. <sighs> now all I'm getting really is my imperial stout. But I tell you what, it's matured lovely. Um, 40 quid for the kit. Absolute bang on. And the longer you can leave it, the better. Good evening. Back to work tomorrow, eh? Oh, I can't wait. <clears throat> First time I had McEwen's champion, I wasn't keen. I thought it was too strong. Um, yeah, too strong. Um, too malty and all that. And yet now, I absolutely love it. Um, and now it don't feel strong at all. It feels like a session. That's good invocation to do that for Greylo. These have all been washed by me. I wash them with, um, the, I get the hose pipe on them and wash them with the hose pipe. Because I, I don't want them going in the dishwasher. I've tried a couple of Dartmoor beers. Yeah, definitely had one the other week. Beers that aren't around. Oh, God. Um, Crabby's Black. 6% ginger beer. Oak-aged, matured ginger beer. Bombardier, Colonel's Choice, or Reserve. I can't remember which one it was. That was about 5.8%. A better version of Bombardier. Um, obviously, Black Witch by Richwood Brewery. Because if they've took that off their list... Then that was an amazing beer. I can't understand ditching that. And again, Dunkle Festa by the same company. Why would you get rid of something that's an iconic Halloween beer? Um, um, oh, God. And that's just a couple. I mean, there's loads. There's loads of good beers that have disappeared. I wasn't really a fan of the... Um, craft beer that we haven't been over for a few years so i haven't really tried a lot over there uh smithwick's is one that i tried that was one of their beers over there i've got the um i've got the glass to match <laughs> and uh harp i tried harp while i was over there as well from guinness but you don't see that in the uk in england anymore no i've not had a bomb beer in a while not since they rebranded it Yeah, Dunkle Festa, Pump King as well. That's not been around for two years. And then you've got to think about the breweries that have disappeared. We've got Hardy and Anson's in Kimberley. And uh, Smithericks might be Guinness. Yeah. Yeah, I've got a nice glass. <laughs> and a heart glass. Funny how you acquire these things. You, you come home and in your suitcase there's a glass couple of glasses and I thought yeah where did they come from <clears throat> it's a bit like the bottles when the but when you bottle a beer all of a sudden it's you, you walk up and wake up in the morning and you've got a, a, a spirit that you've and you think fucking hell where's that gone it was up here last night it's down here now you know these leaky bottles it's uh, it's an issue isn't it I'm sure it was on about that last night leaky bottles I'm sure it was on that late chat I can vaguely remember vaguely
I can still taste the lager element, even though the Imperial Stout, um, I can taste all the Imperial Stout, but I still get that hint of lager. Amazing that something like a stout with all the strong flavours of stout malts and whatever else, you know, you can still taste that lager through it. And yet the cider cut the lager out altogether. I couldn't taste any lager in the snake pie. Interesting. Then again, I'm going to put the black currant in as well. That, that changed the dynamics. Mm. Well, I can say this. Very nice beer, though. I did well making it. I've just found out there's an Eastern European shop on Mansfield Road near me. Um, a bloke bought three shops, knocked them all into one to make a massive Eastern European shop. So, And they're doing really well. They actually cook their own Eastern European bread on, on, on site, which is, you know, it's good. I suppose it's good to bring your, your own culture back here with you. Especially with Nottingham being so multicultural. And... Uh, Definitely gonna have to pop in there over the next week or two and have a, have a go around and see what they've got because they're bound to have something nice. A few beers I've never seen before. That's the hope, anyway. If I walk in and there's nothing, I'll be so pissed at the top. <clears throat> I think that's why I don't go in some shops because I don't want to go in. Yeah, I go in and you're looking for something, you think, oh, there's no two I want, and you feel guilty going out and not buying something. Well, I do anyway. I'll just click on that again. That's it. Ah, no, I couldn't see the comments. <laughs> That's better. I can see the comments again now. Yeah, sometimes I think it just clicks off the flipping comments. I think you'll be blind if I keep drinking strong stuff like this, I tell you. Let me press that button now. What does that button do? Ah, there we go. I can see more comments now. Yeah, Marston's do seem to be lower in their range. It's quite worrying getting rid of decent beers. Press that again. <laughs> yeah, um, I definitely want to see. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Wheat beer. Some strange decisions over there. It's like with food strange decisions on what they keep and what they get rid of um i mean i love sherry trifle that you know from birds birds the sherry trifle kits you can't get them for love and money every brewery really should be bottling everything they do and i've i've, I've messaged breweries about this about about getting all that seasonal stuff that usually goes out on draft into bottles because it's going to sell Cork's grown rip off from cars but i've never seen that one so this saturday beer chat it's those two um badger beers behind me yeah it does taste a bit like bananas at times Have you noticed how pissy the EU are getting on things uh, about, you know, about the vaccine for starters? They're knocking off the, the you know, the border in Northern Ireland, you know. And it's amazing how when they can't get their own way, they're like a bunch of spoiled kids. And uh, yeah, so next week. It's the Thirsty Ferret and the Cranbourne Poacher. The week after, it's the Old Peculiar in the Rigwelter. So if I move my bottle out of the way, yeah, you can see. So next week, these two, and the week after, them two. Horning, though. I mean, they're interesting brews, to be fair. Yeah, yeah, if you can get beers from there. You, you end up bottling them over here anyway. Yeah, they do seem that way, don't they? You know, and they've never liked, um, it'd be the Badgers. The Badgers are the first. The two Badgers are first. The Cranbourne Poach and the Thirsty Ferret next Saturday. And the Saturday after, the O Peculiar and the Rig Welter. And there, there's obviously an interesting conversation about that. 
and a backstory, which is uh, quite interesting. All oh, because of the lockdown situation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That's a shame, isn't it? Because the awning loads are actually quite nice, you know. Badger beers this week. Oh, probably ferret first, poacher afterwards. Yeah, poachers, poachers probably one of the very best beers in supermarket shelves, in my opinion. Yeah, from um, Morrison's. But you can get, you should be able to get Thirsty Ferret and Badger from most of the big four. Maybe not so much Sainsbury's though. Plus you don't want to go there, it costs more. That Tesco's in London, Derry. I go to the one next to where the big police station is. Morrison's on a four for six. Though All them four beers are on a four for six. That's why I bought them. Waitrose are expensive, aren't they? Cranbourne is in Sainsbury's, yes. In the bigger Sainsbury's, not so much the smaller. First, in fact, in fact all four should be in Rig Welter, maybe not in Sainsbury's, certainly in Asda. Yeah, Morrison's do four for six, yeah. Yeah, Thirsty Ferret. I mean, I love Golden Glory, to be honest. But um, you can't, they've stopped brewing Golden Glory. So there's another beer to add to that list of beers that need to be brought back. Colonel Brewery, they, they do some interesting brewing, they do. Variations on a theme, like using their basic pale ale, but with, just with different ops. Years ago, I hated wheat beers. And nowadays, I can drink them. And I actually appreciate them these days. It's amazing how your palate changes over the years. Our beers that were brilliant back 10 years ago are now crap. And, but, you know, some beers just age really well. I've got to find the likes of Caffrey's and Tetley Smooth and some of them older-fashioned beers. Most of the big supermarkets don't do them now. Or their Morrisons probably do. Caffrey's that is. Yeah, next week's beer. So yeah, good beer. Yeah. And who knew damsons were a form of plum, eh? <laughs> and they do bring out some new beers every now and again. Uh the Wicked Wiven, that was a newish beer they bought out. They did do pickled partridge. That was a beer they bought out a few years back. Not seen it since they brought it out. So whether it was a one-off thing. Yeah, <laughs> golden showers. <laughs> oh, dear. Ah, I need, I need desperately to get my arse to a waitrose. Yeah, damson is basically plump. Ridiculous, isn't it? It's a form of plum. Yeah, yeah, no pub tonight. Golden showers, pump clip. I'm definitely making an eye raggy avenue bit. Hopping air, thirsty ferret, golden champion. I do like golden champion. That's a good beer. Um Obviously, Tanglefoot. Um, oh. 35 glasses I had to watch the, watch the other day. Bloody ridiculous. Who's yedding? And that's just the ones in the shed, not the ones up the house. You know, that's my shed supply of glasses. And that's not, that's only the ones that are, I use for beer reviews, not the ones I've got, you know. I'll have to have a glass hole one day.
yeah, obviously they're trying to, you know, because if you look at Tanglefoot, yeah, if you look at Tanglefoot, um, that's their, Tanglefoot and Thirsty Ferret are their mainstream beers. Tanglefoot is in can, it's in crates, it's in bottles, the same with Thirsty Ferret, as is the likes of Old Speckled Hen. Yeah, I'd need a water, I'd need a water feed down there. I mean, I could put a water feed in, it wouldn't be hard. I could, you know, put some blue pipe in from the house. Uh, from the outside tap and bring it down and have a little sink in here. Then have a drain off that just drains off somewhere. I could do it, but yeah, a bit too much hassle. No, no, you have to, you have to either go to Adventure Beer. So, some of the, some beer shops will sell Blue Monkey beers, although Blue Monkey themselves is probably the best place to go. It's cheaper, more than likely. And they do do a good range. Um, Sadly, they don't do a full-on mixed box, which these days can't understand any any anyone doing. Now that'd be nice. Eight point seven percent. Yeah, that'd be de definitely down the old Raggy Avenue. That would. It's actually warm in here tonight. I've got the gas fire on. I've sort I've sorted out the issue. Yeah, I like Twice Tangled. I didn't think it was fantastic, but it was okay. Yeah, but definitely a more traditional beer than, than craft. But obviously, most of the stuff in bottles is more traditional. Most, not all. I'm definitely thinking of getting that. Um, Well, it's, uh, it says it's 10 degrees in here to now. It feels a lot warmer than 10 degrees. Yeah, I'm, I'm sat next to the, I've got the fire next to my legs, so my legs are toasty as they come. And I've got layers on. That one or that one. That one. Yeah, o Oakham. Oakham, it's called Cambridgeshire. Single variety American hop. Citra IPA. Brewed by Oakham Ales for Marks and Spencers. 4.9%. Uh, I think somebody tried one of the uh, Home Bargains ones earlier and uh, wasn't overly impressed with the Dovestone range or whatever they're called. Yeah. I've seen a comment where he was blatantly ripping it apart. Yeah, March was amazing last year. Through that first lockdown, there was four crappy cold days and the rest of it was really nice. Probably sometime in late March, you know, when the shed warms up because uh, it's a bit cold in here at the moment. I don't do it in the house. I can't be done with winding the wipe up. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, it's you know, when it's cold when I've got my blue, my big blue jacket on and my hat on as well. And you can see the air, you know, there's just a hint of coldness when I did that just then. But yeah, on them nights where I can see my breath, then it's really flipping cold. I've tried Green Devil. Yeah, I, I think I might have reviewed that before. Yeah, I think that's the one somebody was slagging off saying it was absolutely evil. So I've not tried it yet, so I did say thanks for the warning, because <laughs> you buy beers, you don't know, do you? You don't know if it's a good beer or a bad beer, you know. The downer is when you buy something that's 10 or 15 quid for the beer, and you drink it, and it's rancid, and it's like, Jesus Christ, that's disgusting. 
All right, so you've a couple of you have had it. <laughs> when the theme parks open up, I definitely need to go down south. I don't know, if, don't know I'm not sure in which car though, because my, my Astra's crap and my wife's Skoda. I don't know if I trust that on a long run. Might have to borrow, borrow the mother in law's, hers is, hers is a year old, but um. Now, Sheriff is only available in... Have you, have you had it? It's um, Lincoln Green Brewing Company. And, uh, yeah, I've only ever had it on draft once. And uh, looking forward to reviewing the bottle. And Lincoln Green, I tell you what, based in Hucknall. Oh. Keep my eye on low cost because I'm waiting for them to get rid of them ciders. Ah, right, yeah, that's interesting to know that you've had it on draft. Um, I'm waiting to, for low cost to get rid of that cider that's on draft. Once they've got rid of that cider and that sparkly water, then I'm going to do a low cost order and get eight, you know, the little bottles, get a load of them little bottles. Nothing. We don't, we don't bother with Valentine's Day. Can't stand the commercialisation of it. So we don't, we don't we don't agree with the commercialization of it. Although if there would have been some Valentine's Day beers, I'd have, I'd have bought them. But no, no, and this year as well, it don't feel right, you know. I mean, Mother's Day next month, and her birthday is two days before, so that we will put effort into. And uh, I've already spent a load on her, so um, it's getting the right presents though, you know. The right, I mean, obviously we're doing cakes. A lot of presents that I get these days are for her hobby. As with me, a lot of presents I get from my family are for my hobby, i.e. drinking. Let's hope so, right? We don't need no more snow. Probably not. She's been working on cakes since about 8 o'clock this morning, so she's knackered. Yeah, next month, March the 15th, I think it is, this year. Oh, God. If I'd have started beer reviewing 10 years ago, that would have been interesting. Me and uh, Simon would have been rivals 10 years back. Hey, oh, didn't start till two years ago. <laughs> no, we don't want any more icing. No, no, no. Hey, yeah, St. Patrick's Day beer chat. Yes, that's an interesting one. Might have to think about that. Try and get some Irish, try and get some Irish beers in, at least Guinness. Yeah, get some foreign extra Guinness, get variations on the Guinness cream. <laughs> yeah, we always try and do the best for each other, you know, buying each other's decent stuff. And uh, yeah, so what I might do for St. Patrick's Day is get a load of different Irish beer. I know, flipping a fifth day. Not looking forward to that. <laughs> oh, the wife's got a feud colour in. I could do that. I don't know if I'd really want to drink green Guinness, though. It'd be a thing, wouldn't it? Irish whiskey as well. Yeah, bless you. Rob, carrying on, I, I, I was on this section last week and uh, doing loads of pruning of, of privet that was like that, ridiculous. And again, carrying on with that, and then start raking, and at least the frost and snow's gone now, so I can actually get into the, the ground. And basically barrowing loads of leaf mould into the beds, filling the beds up. I've got these raised beds that are about this high. So... Cider and stout. That'd be nice. I 
don't know, my dumps have been black today, and that's because of the wine last night. Yeah, very black. It's amazing over the years the, the brands that disappear because the because supermarkets fall out with them. Um I mean there was a time when Sainsbury's fell out with Diageo, who make who are, you know, who own a lot of brands and their shelves were very there was a time when a lot of the spirits on the shelves were empty because they fell out of them. They soon sorted things out though. But uh, yeah, it's amazing how brands come and go. One brand I would love to bring back is a New Zealand brand, uh, Vodka Mud Shakes. The alcoholic milkshake. My wife would love them. Pubs are going to be interesting when they reopen. See how many reopen. I'll do that black velvet another night. Probably a weekend though, not on, not on a weekday. But, you know, the sparkling wine and the um, stout, just to see what it tastes like, see if it's nice. Ooh. So, in the end, you know, the black and tan thing didn't really work out as it was meant to. I think the lager was too thin for the uh, pissing down there, um, for the stout. But interesting. Champagne's too expensive. <laughs> I'm not buying, I'm not buying it. It's too expensive to buy. I need to get the cheap stuff, but the cheap stuff isn't the nice stuff. Um, sparkly wine, you know, just because it says it's champagne doesn't mean it's any better than Prosecco. Prosecco is better than champagne. Gotta be honest, and uh, yeah, I mean, some of the best sparkly wines are probably the likes of um, you know, it depends on how dry you like your wines. I like a demi sec, so a demi sec is a slightly sweeter wine, and uh, it's a lot nicer for that as well. I mean, champagne and chambord, oh, 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 lovely. One way of doing it, isn't it? Definitely got the lager element on the top from the from the actual um, the foam on the top and the stout. It was it was it was weird to taste both lager and stout in a in a beer, an imperial stout at like that. And all the way through the glass, definitely got the lager element and the stouty element. Obviously, the stouty was like ninety percent the lager, just a hint, but certainly there. Might get myself a soda stream again one day. Just to do crazy things like that, and then getting one to put some to put some fizz into me. You know that with own brew, put some fizz some fizz back into the own brew. Yeah, yeah, sparkling red wine. I used to have one back in the day, but it was an expensive way of doing it. I thought I did, you always you always overdid it with the bloody this you know the stuff. The um, concentrate always put too much, too much in, and uh, then you're paying for your gas bottles as well. I find it an expensive way. The best thing is to have a, a big gas bottle, like a, a color gas bottle. Right, anyway, so I have five for me. Yeah, it didn't really work. I mean, the stout tasted lovely, but I'd say about a three point eight for this. Yeah, definitely didn't work. Didn't work to plan. And, uh, right, better go back up the house. I've got to clean the kitchen. <sighs> yeah, I've got, got to clean all my pots away from cooking dinner. Yeah, putting pub gas in and, and converting it to using the soda stream. Now, that would be an interesting way of doing it. Right. Thank you all, thank you all for watching and commenting. And uh, it's been a good one. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Should be an interesting day tomorrow. Okay. Try not to drink any more tonight and uh, try and sleep. Thanks for watching. Thanks for commenting and uh, see you soon. Cheers. Oh, my legs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can't find the X button. <laughs>